All right, guys, I just uh, did a quick setup here. I got to react to this. I love Trevor Rabin, and he has a second single out called Push. Buckle your mind in, because it's about to get blown. One thing that's exciting about it, well, Louis said you got to check it out. It's great, and it's seven minutes long. Yay! We like songs, prog songs that are long. We don't mind that at all. So let's react to this. I may stop it and chat. And also the video will probably be blocked, but I'll, I'll uh, scramble it. Hmm. Nice finger style picking on the electric. Interesting pattern. You wake me up. You want me to know. You take me to blue eyes. Stereo of the guitar you school. Me down. You move the ground. You call me I'm inspired. I didn't realize he has such a high range. That reminds me of ACDC. Nice. Check out the bass line. Pretty bouncy. Sorry, I had to pause. I usually don't do that, but the, the music is so loud. If I keep chatting, you're not going to hear it. Anyways, I just love the way he produces drums. He produced talk, and in that album in particular, Alan White's drums sounded really cool. Now, you could argue and say, well, they sounded also a little bit cold. They sounded a little bit, you know, digital in a way. But um, to me, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a stylistic sound. Um, you know, you can argue whether... Ar ar you can argue whether analog is a better sound, and that's definitely not very analog-y because it's very compressed, but it's it's really, yeah, it's really compressed in a cool way. It's sort of like, you know, airbrush in art, you know, or, um, yeah, it really pops, you know, like, or modern colors. It's just a style. I really like it. Uh, Raven's got good taste, I think. So here we go back to the song. Three, two, one, oh, three, two, one, go. Chris Squire would have been all over this tune, I think. He would have loved it.
was a Pat Metheny vibe there in the end. I'm liking it. I miss Lyle Mays terribly. Oh, nice. A little dissonant fading off there. Remind me almost of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The soundtrack has that sort of... Sort of unnerving. I'm, I'm not sure why he ends the track like that. Probably he's heading into another track. Well, I have to say, considering the last track I really liked it, and this track just blew me away. Like, I just reacted to Stephen Wilson's Impossible Tightrope, which was really good. And it's a real return to... Uh, sort of the classic prog feel, I, I guess. And now Trevor Rabin also doing this. And I have to admit, this bowled me over much more than Trevor, uh, than Stephen Wilson. As much as I love Stephen Wilson, I have to say this track, this track just blew me away. This just, wow. <laughs> that was so exciting, man. Yeah, it brings me right back to, you know, the days when I got into prog rock in the late 70s and specifically prog rock and then uh then all of a sudden yes broke up which was my my favorite prog band and then uh when they came out with 90125 i had that album on my platter the first day it came out i was so excited and i was blown away by 90125 i'll never forget that moment listening to uh the album start with and let me think, was Trevor Rabin new? Yeah, Trevor Wabin, <laughs> Wabin. Trevor Wabin was brand new to me. I'd never heard of him before. And here he was playing some amazing music with Yes. You know, I was worried because Steve Howe, I thought, wow, no one can touch Steve Howe. But then again, Trevor Rabin uh, is more in the school of Eddie Van Halen, you know, whereas Steve Howe is really not that style at all. And it's apples and oranges. I'm not saying any, either are better. They're both wonderful. We're blessed to have apples and oranges. And, uh, but, but bless Trevor Rabin for saving, yes, because, uh, I mean, they were primed and ready. If you listen to Drama album, yes was already, even with Steve Howe, he was, he was catching on with the, the heavier, he was pre prescient of, of the coming prog metal. That was Steve Howe, you know, who we all often deride as not prog metal at all and we wish he'd be prog metal maybe maybe not everyone i sort of kind of wish he would still just try prog metal you know it doesn't mean he's abandoning all the other beautiful stuff he does anyways so so trevor rabin uh rescued yes i believe even though they were primed and ready for something like that they really needed him though he was really the missing player because uh steve howe i don't know i don't know what would have happened if steve howe had stayed with Yes uh, right through the 80s. Maybe some really cool stuff would have happened. Who knows? But anyways, this is a brand new album from Trevor Rabin. I am very excited after that track. Holy crap. That was seriously great. Uh, amazing in, in all respects. Just uh, compositionally, the excitement, the energy, the drums were just fantastic. Um, the bass lines were amazing. Uh, too bad Chris Cryer wasn't around because I'm sure he would have sunk his teeth into that like a 12-inch submarine sandwich. He would have loved it. Uh, anyways, that's the React. Thanks. Oh, yeah, leave your thoughts. and Make sure you leave your thoughts below. I want to know what you guys think. How you how are you liking this track? Is it getting you excited? Is it are the hairs in the back of your head uh, standing up? <laughs> so spiraling out as Dean talked to you later. Bye. Boy, I'm glad I did this React. This was worth it.